Hey guys. We <laughs> It's just my wrist brace. <laughs> All right, we've got some jokes for you to give you some joy for your week. Aaron will go first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what do you call a pastor in Germany? What? A German shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. That's a good one, Aaron. Okay, okay. How about um Oh yeah. Uh, do you need an arc, Aaron? Because I know a guy. <laughs> Get it? Noah. Noah who built the arc. I know a guy. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I got another one. Uh, what is Eve's favorite food? Mm, what? Ribs. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. That's a good That's one. Pretty good, right? Let me think. Let me think. Uh... You know, all I can think of are Christian pickup lines. So, <laughs> okay. well, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. So, I was reading in the book of Numbers the other day, and I realized I don't have yours. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. I'll give you that. It's pretty good. All right, I got one more joke for you. Okay. <laughs> if Jesus had a car, what, uh, what would he drive? What kind of car would Jesus drive? What? A Chrysler. <laughs> Unlike his disciples who drove a Honda Accord, Accord they were because of, they're of one accord. one accord. Did that joke work? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we love you and we hope mm -hmm. your, your week is just full of so much joy. Yeah. All Bye. Right. This is opening. This is a, a place that I've been coming. I first came on holiday to when I was a child, maybe about nine years old, and I just loved the uh, the 
splendour of the scenery and um, being able to run along beaches and across rocks and poke about in rock pools and uh, I just loved it and uh, as an adult I've been coming here pretty much every year since I was about 20 um, and it, it's a place that brings me such joy um, there's such peace here I find rest here it's a place of recreation and refreshment and deep joy and actually I'm here with my family, another source of great joy for me. I'm moving off the beach now and onto the actual hamlet itself of Open. Um, I'm here with my family and they are another source of great joy for me. And yet uh, in the Bible we read in Psalm 16 that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. That fullness of joy only comes from the presence of God. It only comes from being in relationship with him. And all these other things, this beautiful place, I'm just going to wheek around and show you our house. Here's our wee house. Our big house looks like a house, but it looks like a building. That's our next door neighbour. Anyway, back to the beach. Um, yeah, it's only uh, in the presence of God, in right relationship with God, that we can find true joy. And that's a joy that settles deep within us and that anchors us when things around us feel like they're going a bit wrong and things are a bit out of control. That depth of joy eh, in the presence of God is what anchors me and steadies me. So I pray that you too will find in God fullness of joy.
I've learned from my parents and their ministry for the past 40 plus years is their trust in Jesus. Till date, they live a faith-based life, which means that there is no steady income that comes in every month. So they're on their knees in prayer, asking God to provide their every need. As a child growing up, and even nowadays, Sometimes I ask them the question, Ma, Pa, how do you do it? How can you be so carefree when you have bills to pay at the end of the month and you don't know where that money is coming from? You don't have a, a benefit system that you can fall back to if you're struggling to buy food or the basics. How do you do it? How can you be so calm? And the answer they gave was quite astonishing. They always said that God will never fail us nor forsake us. My mom used to sing this song, this old song called The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. Uh, at one point I thought, my mom's gone crazy. But you know what? Through all these years, I have seen that God took care of them. Not only them, anybody who knocks on their door for help. And they're always there to help them. They're always being generous to other people as well. Whenever I think of the word joy, happiness comes to mind as well. But they are very different from each other. Happiness is often triggered by external factors. It can be based on people or circumstances and thoughts. We feel happy when things go our way and someone says something nice to us. We are happy. Joy is deep within us. It has no bearing on what goes on in our lives. It is a gift from God 
as one of the fruits of the Spirit. It is constant, regardless of whatever situation we are in. And it comes from a place um, where we are at peace in who we are in Christ. Joy is lasting. It expels fear and worries. It sets us free. We can maintain the peace in the knowledge that God will take care of things for us. We don't have to wonder what tomorrow holds for us and leave it to chance, but we can be so sure that no matter what, God holds our future. And the joy that stems uh, from that realization gives us the strength to go on no matter what. This joy is firmly based on the foundations of hope and faith in God to provide us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to guide us and give us clarity during difficult times. And this joy that God gives us is ours. It's for ours to keep and nobody can take that away from us. Psalm 94 was written during the time of great persecution. We read in the whole of the psalm uh, of the oppression and pain caused by evildoers. Yet the psalmist uh, says that when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. The comfort, the peace and the joy that God gives him surpassed every trial he faced. Similarly, the joy that God gives us is real. It is like an everlasting fountain within us that sets us free from all uncertainties and anxieties. Hope this was helpful. Have a great week, everyone. This is my joy song, my favourite joy song. I learned it as a child when I was in Sunday school. It goes like this. I've got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got that. I am so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. <laughs>How do we experience true joy from our personal relationship with the Holy Spirit? Well, let's see what God's Word says about that. John 15, 11 says this, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Paul writes in Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And the mighty Isaiah in chapter 55, 12 writes this, for you, shall, for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Now the word joy in the Greek translates loosely as calm delight. So that screams to me that this is something that's coming from a deep inner place. Uh, it's not anything external, it's not anything of this world. It's not worldly things, it's not stuff, it's not material things, uh, which is all transient, it's all shallow, it's all veneer. Um, that true calm delight comes from an absolute surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost working deep within us to transform us, setting us free from all of our chains, liberating us fully from our sins, from our doubts, from our fears, um, from our insatiable needs and desires or our wants for more and yet more. No, it only comes from surrendering. It's only then that we experience from that feeling of that place of brokenness that we feel that deep inner peace uh, and the, yeah, that calm delight that flows from that. Um, but we've got to say 100% yes to Jesus because in doing that we're saying 100% no to the enemy. We're stepping into the light away from the darkness and that's an intentional conscious choice to do that. We can't half surrender, you can't half 
say yes. So that's why we've got to do it wholeheartedly. Um, it's not just letting his spirit, the wind, work in us. We've got to let him come through us in a gale. We've got to let him destroy us so that he, and only he can, then rebuild us. Um, because it's, it's through doing that that we absolutely do we experience uh, his joy within us as we're told in scripture um the, the, the fruit of the spirit the foundational fruit um are joy peace and love and it's out of that it's out of that foundation that our lord will then open doors and the plan his plan his glorious plan for our life will then start to unfold um, so as Isaiah tells us, it's when we're utterly surrendered that we're completely transformed, that we then go out in joy and peace covered in singing and even the trees clapping their hands are overflowing calm delight. So yeah, just say yes to JC and his light and just surrender to his infinite power and his perfect love. Trust fully in him and let his joy become our joy and let it flow upward and outward, saturating our heart our minds and our souls as we become joyful and free as new creations in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you all.